to the Feed to Succeed podcast. I'm Betsy Youngren, registered dietitian and pediatric nutrition expert, and I am here with my co-host. Hi everyone, it's Jen Caracosta, family and consumer sciences teacher and culinary coach. Hey Jen. Hi. You know what, can I also add maybe another tagline? Go for it. Elementary school e-learning teachers? You could probably (laughs) add that too. No. No? No. No. Junior high. Junior high and high school. Do you believe that? No. Yeah, I know. No, I can't. My daughter's going to be a junior next year. Oh, gosh, that's crazy. It's so crazy. It's crazy. I I mean, I cried when she went into sixth grade because I was like, well, I don't have a baby yet. I don't like it anymore. And it seems like all the rest of them did, but it wasn't. No, my baby's going to go to kindergarten. Yeah. She's very excited and tells everybody. Why, why wouldn't well, why she? Why wouldn't I know? Yeah. yeah. And then my older one lies, and she's like, I'm going to third grade. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> not. I'm going to second grade. She's funny. Oh, yeah. Real, real funny. Your kids both, they're, they're born entertainers. <laughs> they really kind of are. Um, <laughs> the apple might not fall far from the tree. Um, and there's, like, yeah. And I'm laughing because obviously all of our devices are connected to the cloud and so they record these videos of themselves and then it winds up on my phone. Yeah. And I'm like, where did this come from? Mm. And it's like a 23 minute video of um, hair care. Hair care. <laughs> That's like, amazing. You're five and seven. What do you know about they, yeah, they want a YouTube channel. It's not happening. Um, but they want to have. Um, a vlog, they want to be on YouTube. I mean, that's a thing to do these days. I know, but yeah, I think they think that if they show toys, they'll be a millionaire too. And maybe they would, I don't know, maybe. but I'm not. Uh, maybe people would love following them. Maybe. I'm not ready for that yet. So. No. I don't know. Okay. Well, okay. We've got time to think about it. You're right, exactly. Yeah. We're all home. Right. Not a lot of time to think. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> a lot of time while we're keeping cleaning and cooking and working and teaching. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. So, all All right. right. Well, jinx. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Now we're just getting giddy. Yeah. So this is, um, I believe we're in series six of the Feed to Succeed podcast. I think so. This is episode two. Okay. And so we are practicing our new format of flexibility and keeping an eye on um, trends and what's hot in the news and having some fun conversations surrounding that. And I thought that a really interesting thing we could talk about was a, 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 an article that was put out in um, Nutrition and Dietetics Smart Brief this week. I get those in my inbox all the time. But but just to pre- precede that, I feel like I'm really stuttering. But okay. we're going to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. You're good. I also thought it would be kind of interesting to share some of the situations that we encounter here in the office. So I do need to be very um, respectful of patient privacy, and I am going to kind of change some of these stories as I tell them just to protect the Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So here's an example. This week I saw um, a couple kids. I keep messing that too. Let me just stop. Um, and the, the family has a history of some chronic health conditions, which most families do. Sure. And this family's chronic condition list includes diabetes. And so naturally the parents are concerned about making sure that the kids are healthy so that they avoid going down that same path. Right. So, th- so these kids came and they had a consultation with me to look at how they're eating and see if there was anything concerning that maybe they should change in terms of preventing long-term outcomes such as diabetes. And when I was looking at this food record from these kids, the first thing I thought was, well, this is pretty typical American. And the second thing I thought was, gee, so much refined carb and going back to last fall when I did this anti-inflammatory diet trying to avoid processed carbs and this seems to be like a recurring theme for me as well because I have another friend who contacted me a couple weeks ago she knows I'm a dietitian we're like Facebook friends but she was also 
asking questions that are found preventing diabetes because as we get older she's having some blood sugar changes and I talked with her and she's healthy and she's an athlete and we looked at what she was eating and I really couldn't figure out anything other than again this whole refined carb thing do you know what I mean when I say refined carbs yeah you probably do yeah I do so for example some of the things these people are eating that they're making up the bulk of their diet it was like sandwiches on white bread and pirates booty and popcorn and Velveeta biscuits which for some reason people get the impression that that's a health food can I ask why I, I've heard this I've actually heard um, I've heard it promoted by a professor of dietetics really this was years ago okay so I just remember the Velveeta and, yeah. you know, this is a good on the go, and I, I just was like, hmm, that seems interesting. So why do you think that people think that particular food is healthy? Is healthy? I don't know. Okay. I think because it advertises itself as a breakfast item. Okay. Is that crazy? Because Pop-Tarts are a breakfast item, and clearly those aren't what? healthy. I never liked Pop Tarts anyways. We were not allowed to have we them were in our house, so we were, but I never I was like, this is like cardboard. What's very much like cardboard. What's going on here? Okay. But I did discover when I got to college that the blueberry frosted Pop Tarts were really the amount of sugar and frosting and blueberry outweighed the taste of the cardboard Pop Tart. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Never found one that I enjoyed. I did enjoy a toaster strudel though. Okay. <laughs> Just saying. Never bought them, but if someone offered it to me, I wasn't saying no. But okay, so the Belvita. All right, so back to the back to the family. So you were yeah. finding, you know, when you're looking at the refined carbs, obviously something that's not in its natural state. It has been very over processed, and yeah, any amount of nutritional value has been taken out of it. Right. Um, but also, you know, unfortunately. Um, Advertisers and food companies are very, very good at presenting packaging mm -hmm. that makes something look um, not what it is. Would that be the best way to say it? Yeah. So, so right now as we talk, I'm looking on my laptop here. Okay. And I've opened up the Belvita website. Okay. And the homepage that comes up says some big green healthy letters. Good morning, energy. Right. There you go. And then it says, let's face it, mornings are crazy. That's why each pack of crunchy Velveeta breakfast biscuits includes four lightly sweetened crunchy biscuits that have been specially baked to release four hours of nutritious, steady energy to fuel you all morning long. Are those magic options up there? Are they, are they specially baked in what? In four hours of what? I would like to know how that's possibly releasing four hours of energy. Well, I think most complex carbs, grains, that aren't fully refined are going to give you four hours-ish worth of energy if you're, depending on the glycemic index of the product. I think the hilarious thing is in small orange letters underneath it says, find us in the cookie hyphen cracker aisle. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so there you go, <laughs> and make bad very bold, but that's where you're going to find them. You're not finding them in the Toasty Coat and Crunch. Let's look at We're going to look at the, the ingredients. Now, now we're very we're intrigued getting to by this part. Yeah, well, if the Belvita company's listening. Sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> um, yeah, so per serving, 230 calories. So for all four biscuits. Correct. Okay, so let's talk about quickly about that, because... Remember what a serving is. You've got to look at, at the packaging to see yes. what the serving actually is. And I know that um, now I believe in 2020 the packaging had to change so that it looked, it, it, you could read it better. Um, but when a package says per serving, and that means you need to like maybe sometimes count it out. For so sure. Just, you know, and that was 230 calories? Yeah. And a lot. I'm trying to figure out because the detail isn't here usually when you see serving size it'll say serving size four biscuits parentheses X number of grams but on this on the website it doesn't list that so I'm trying to figure that out because I want to know if I really think it's an appropriate USDA serving well and when you look at that that's more than 10% of 
what carb intake should be if you're on a standard 2,000 calorie a day diet, which is high for some people. 2,000 calories is a lot for some people. It is. So that's, and that's just biscuits. That's not Correct. anything else. Yeah, so I'm trying to now, we're going to look at the nutrition facts on the box, not on the website. Let's see what their box says. So here it says one pack is 50 grams. And according to the USDA, 30 grams of carb, no, 30 grams of a grain-based product is one serving, and that usually contains 15 grams of carb. Okay. Because it contains gram weight of other things. So 30 grams altogether, the weight of a slice of bread, is typically 15 grams of carbohydrate plus some protein and fat in there, and that's the serving. Okay. So this weighs 50 grams, so this is almost, almost double. Double. Almost two servings. Okay. But now they've told us it's one. Right. But it's not. It's roughly said 230 calories. And for those 230 calories, um, 36 grams. So I'm doing the math in my head. 120 plus 24, 144. Like 50% of the calories in the biscuit are from carb. Okay. It has four grams of protein. Mm. This low quality protein. Right. You're not looking at the good the good protein. Right. And it has eight grams of fat. Okay. Which is lowers its glycemic index, which is what helps extend extend the time the life of the, the life carb of the in your system. Right. Which is how they're getting this well, it gives you four hours of energy. Yep. Okay. Now ingredients. Oh, how long is this list? Whole grain blend of parentheses <laughs> rolled oats and rye flakes. Hmm. Rye flakes? Are rye flakes a whole grain? I don't think so. They're certainly processed. Rye doesn't grow in a flake form. Okay, not at least I've never seen it that way. Okay. 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 Ingredient number two enriched flour. Enriched with? Processing. <laughs> it's wheat flour, niacin, reduced iron, thiamine, riboflavin, folic acid. It's your standard bag of white flour that you would bake cookies with. Okay. And did you know, I know this because I used to review menus for daycares, that if enriched flour is an ingredient, it counts for um, a serving of a healthy grain, even if it's a cookie. Yes. Yeah, I didn't know that. That drives me nuts. I know. Right? Yep. I know. It allows daycares to serve cookies as the grain if they want to. Awful. <laughs> no, I, I, I know. Okay, third ingredient, sugar. Okay. Fourth ingredient, whole grain wheat flour. Hmm. So that's a minuscule amount. Yeah, when you're already down to the sugar in there. Right, <laughs> when you're already down to the fourth ingredient. Canola oil, okay. toasted dried coconut, malt syrup, sugar, from corn and barley. I thought malt had to come from barley. It's not corn. I don't know. Invert sugar, sugar, <laughs> baking soda, soy lecithin, disodium pyrophosphate, and that is. Is that what it is? Datum, D-A-T-E-M, that's a new one to me. D-A-T-E-M? Do you know that? No, that? never heard of it. Salt. Mysterious natural flavor. <laughs> Ferric orthophosphate. Niacinamide, now we're just getting into the fortification. Right. Pyridoxine hydrochloride. Riboflavin. Thiamine mononitrate. And then in bold it said contains wheat and soy, which I didn't even read any soy ingredients in there. So that, soy lecithin. Oh, I did say soy lecithin. Yeah. You're right. But still, I mean, that's a long list. That's it a is. long list. It so is. you're looking at a lot of processing that's going on in this, and this is not a healthy recipe for a good start to your day. Jen, if you were choosing a healthy, complex carb to eat in the morning, what would that look like for you? I were 
choice between a healthy, complex carb, I would choose plain rolled oats. Oatmeal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not not instant. Right. You know, like I would be doing something where you're taking a while to boil it, and, and because that's where you're going to get your actual nutrients out of the situation. How many ingredients are on the the box of the those oats? One. Oh, right. Okay. Plain rolled oats. <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah. So when you're looking at that, you know, I get that the instant package of oatmeal are quick and on the go, but there's lots of things that you can do to actually make them ahead of time to do mm-hmm. the overnight oats or something like that. Anytime you want to make oatmeal, one, make it yourself, two, sweeten it yourself and add things yourself because yeah. then you are in control of the quantity. Yes. So I get plain oatmeal doesn't have any flavor. Mm-hmm. You want to put a little salt in it, you can boil it with milk, you can boil it with water, I'm sure you could boil it with any of the other types of milk, milk substitutes, substitutes anything like that, so yeah. whatever you're doing is fine, but you know, you can add a little drizzle of maple syrup mm-hmm. or honey, but maybe measure that out, right? you know, so that you're not just, you know, dumping that on, and then add, if you want to add some crunch to it, chia seeds or flax that's mm-hmm. going to increase your protein Walnut, and your fat, right, exactly, trees. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then add the fruit yourself too. Right. So, like I said, I get what I'm. You're, you know, you're like, all right, I don't have time. Everyone has time now. They're home. <laughs> so that's one thing. For now. For now. Yeah. For now. Everyone's got time. They're home. But also, you're then in control of what of what you're doing. But I'm gonna throw this back at you. Yeah. What if you wanted to make something like this at home? Yeah. So actually, as you were speaking, I was just thinking like, you could make. Basically, this is basically a cookie. Yeah. You could make a cookie, a homemade cookie, with fewer additives, preservatives, and processed ingredients that would be nutritionally superior to this packaged product. And it's a cookie. Right. right? You could make an oatmeal cookie. Mm -hmm. You could use whole wheat flour instead of white. You could reduce the amount of sugar you used in there. Right. It's containing raisins. Mm-hmm. Eggs, eggs, and that is a whole food. I, in my opinion, that's a better breakfast than this packaged biscuit. Absolutely, yeah. And even you know, whole wheat flour is it is a, it has a different texture, a different flavor to it. So you can even mix and then start to change your ratios as you kind of get used to it a little bit. Um, also, have you ever made the energy bites? I haven't, but I love them. I've had other people who have made them. Okay, so you rolled oats, peanut butter, mm-hmm. raisins, mm-hmm. mini chocolate chips, yeah. um, honey, okay. flax seeds, and chia seeds. I've seen some other recipes too using dates. Yep, I've I seen that too. I love using dates. They're high in potassium. They're really naturally sweet. Right. You don't even need sugar if you use dates. Right, because it's got the natural sugar in it, mm-hmm. but you roll them up, stick them in the freezer, and it is something that will sustain your hunger. Absolutely. It's a good, and, it, and it's all really unprocessed natural ingredients. So, so something to think about to change it up a little bit. Nate was in um, a foods class this spring semester. Well, it was remote learning, right? Yeah. Because we were e-learning. But right. he was in foods this spring. And the teacher assigned them to bake cookies, and he had never done that before. Yeah. So he wanted to make oatmeal raisin cookies, and that's exactly what we did. We used whole wheat flour and oat and raisins and all that. And he asked me, he said, can I have these for breakfast? They're so delicious. I said, sure. Yeah. It's better than, you know, the sugar cereal he was just out of by him. Right. It's true. Yeah. And I mean, anyway, so going back to this, but the reason, one of the reasons, aside from the fact that I saw, I see this regularly in my office families who are concerned about diabetes prevention. But the other thing that um, came up this week in this article, which I'm just going to open it up and just tell you because I sent it to you, Jen, and you and I already talked about it a little bit, but there was a study uh, presented at Nutrition 2020 Live Online Conference, and they're talking about replacing uh, calories from fat with calories from carbon. They, they're referencing a study in which they replaced 5% of somebody's calories from saturated fat, which would be butter, fat, meat, fat, dairy, fat. They took 5% of their calories away and replaced them with carb. 
one group of people, they replace them with refined carbs, like we're talking about these packaged cookies, crackers, whatever. Right. And the other group, they replaced them with um, high quality carbs, complex, unprocessed carbs. And over time, what they found was the group in such a small amount, 5% of their calories of that replaced with refined carbs increased their risk of type 2 diabetes. Wow. 5%. 5% of calories. Yeah. And it, like you were just saying, a 2,000 calorie diet, that's 100 calories. They're replacing 100 calories of saturated fat with a packaged carb increases risk of type 2 diabetes. Wow. 100 calories. Yeah. That doesn't take a lot. That, it doesn't take long to get to 100 calories. No, so. that's one slice of white bread. Yeah. That's one slice. Right. And then you see these families who their kids are having... The, the lunch looks like this. It's a sandwich on two pieces of white bread. It's pirate's booty or popcorn and then who, some crackers. I mean, that's their whole lunch. Right, right. You're not seeing a ton of complex carbohydrates. And, you know, I, I believe me, I'm not sitting here in judgment because my kids certainly eat pirate's booty or crackers or popcorn yeah. or something like that. But then what are they also balancing it out with? So well, yeah. where are they also getting their good source of carbohydrates and things like that? And I think, you know, unfortunately, people are like, I'm doing a low-fat diet. I'm doing, you know, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. But there's a lot of layers to that. There are. And even carrying 100 calories, you know, that, like I said, doesn't take long to get there, one slice of bread. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. And there's a lot of misconceptions about carbs. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Well, some believe carbs are the devil. Right. <laughs> so, some believe that any carb, you know, low fat is the way to go. Right. Low fat, zero fat, and then any carb is fine. Right. Which exactly. is not the case. Right. Um, you know, I mean, it, it, there's a lot of misinformation out there. And where are you getting it? Where are you sourcing your information? And sometimes the, the mommy blogs are not necessarily the best source. Right. It's been someone's experience doesn't mean it's a healthy way to go. So I'm often trying to counsel, especially like my middle school age patients and teenagers on eating complex carbs. And some of the teenagers recently, well not recently always, but a couple of them that I'm thinking about that I've seen recently, have had to do so much education to these kids about carbs are okay. Mm -hmm. if they're healthy carbs mm -hmm. um, and, and I had a girl who, who's really having a difficult time maintaining her body weight and the mom has a history of dieting and weight issues as well and her mom is completely terrified of carbs like you said mm -hmm. well so the kid has grown up observing that and the kid is terrified of carbs but she can't maintain her weight so I was telling her you know what you can eat a baked potato at dinner and both of them were like, oh, oh my gosh, a baked potato, that's a carb. <laughs> like it's a, it is. It's yeah. high carb content. Absolutely. But it's a whole unprocessed vegetable. It's high in potassium. It's high in fiber. It's high in vitamin C. Nobody's added anything to it that doesn't have any preservatives in it. And boy, is that a good carb for somebody who needs some calories yeah. to burn. Right. Yeah. And, and that's a scary thing that now kids think carbs are the devil. Right. You know, and then not necessarily knowing what is in, you know, when you're saying it's a completely unprocessed carbohydrate. Right. See it in the oven. It grew from the earth. Right. Hello, it's a tuber. Right. I'm just saying. Um, you're right. But, you know. But that's what we're looking for, guys. So if you're, if you're wondering what is a complex carb that's healthy for me, it's the ones that have not been altered from their natural form. Right, exactly. You had mentioned oats. Mm -hmm. I like in the morning, and we talked a little bit about other breakfast ideas with the oats and so forth, but I like that Bob's Red Mill muesli. Okay. Have you ever had that? I have not. It's good? I love it. It's a blend of whole oats and some other grains, including, um, there's a wheat in there, but it's whole wheat kernels, sunflower seeds, little bits of date, dates. It's very good. It's, it's energy dense though. 
Sure. Like a quarter cup of that is 140 calories. A quarter cup. It's not a lot. But I that I like that. I use that for my morning carb very often with some Greek yogurt and some fresh fruit. Okay. That's a good one. Plain Greek yogurt, yeah? Or no? Usually. Sometimes okay. I use a little honey. Okay. Or recently, because it is low sugar, I've been enjoying the um, Dickies vanilla cinnamon yogurt. Mm, that sounds good. It's um, 2.5 grams of sugar added. That's half a teaspoon. I can live with that. Yeah. That's a very small amount. Yeah. But it's enough to make it taste good with my fruit. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it, it, it is an education piece, and we've talked about this, I think, through every single series. Yeah. That in order to maintain good health, long-standing health, you have to educate yourself on what you're eating. Mm -hmm. You have to read a label. You have to understand what it is. And I do think that, you know, obviously the labels have gotten easier to read because they had to, because they are, they, of course, companies want you to buy their stuff. It's a mm -hmm. for-profit organization. Right. And anything that they can kind of sneak in, they're going to. Right. You know, but when you look at sugar content, processed, you know, the processing, the number of ingredients, you know, the longer the list, the more processed it is. Correct. So when you think potato, if you see anything else that's on that label, then go away and buy the fresh potatoes. But, right. you know, you want to think about how you're actually educating yourself on, on what you're eating and even coming back to the family you're talking about, you know, how did that conversation go when you're looking at all of their diets? For the family who has a family history with the diabetes? Yeah. So it was interesting. Um, I, I flipped that family. I didn't want to talk to the kids at the same time because I didn't want them making comments or biasing each other. And But we did. We went through that and we looked at how many grams of carb does somebody their age need in a day? And then how, it, which it, for their age, we calculated it out, it was around 200. And how much of that should be complex carb? And then we actually went to these food records they brought me and we looked at how much did they actually consume. Mm -hmm. And the little girl, she wasn't that little, she was a teenager, she said, oh, <laughs> now that you're talking about this and telling me this, this is like all I eat. Right. Yeah. That's a big shift. I think a lot of people eat like that because it's convenient. And, and you don't realize, you think a pirate's booty because it, it looks like a healthier package is okay compared to like traditional chips, um, things like that. that people, like shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Veggie straws. Veggie straws. Oh my gosh. Drives me nuts. Right. I know. And I serve them to my kids, but I also am like, that's not what they live on. You know, right. but, and, and here's the thing. I think I want to be careful when we talk about this, we're coming at it from a place of education and not family shaming. Mm -hmm. you right. know, you're right, you're right. There's so many scenarios, especially where we are in the world today. Food is comfort. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, I am definitely enjoying more treats because I'm like, it just makes you feel better. But you have to yeah. be careful because that can be a really slippery slope. And we're not saying you can't have something no it's that if that is a mainstay in your diet you want to look at how you can make some changes absolutely so and referring back to the study we're talking about a five percent difference right in hey replace some of those calories with some healthy fats not necessarily saturated fats but replace some of those carb calories with some healthy fats and maybe right. be a little bit more moderate in some of those things and, and try and be choosing things that have fewer ingredients and that are made with whole grains. Right. Yeah. And even with that, the way, you know, what, what calories do in your system and how they are used for energy, more isn't always better. Right. So more, adding more, it's adding different. Variety is always the key. Right. Absolutely. But also just, um, you know, oh, I'm hungry, I'm going to have another piece of bread. Think about, you know, Maybe you're adding some olive oil oh, yeah. to your vegetables right. or something like that. That's actually going to keep you fuller and longer. It is, but that's kind of, again, it's like a change of habit, a change of mind frame. Like even last night, you and I were out in the yard Yeah. at whatever time it was, and we were going to have a little adult beverage, and I brought out a bag of broken, stale pretzels because I didn't want to have a beverage before dinner on an empty stomach. 
but but exactly that, like that's convenient that these pretzels I'm eating them for no reason other than to put something in my stomach. <laughs> and ironically, I did the same thing before I came in. I was like, oh, I just ate pretzels as well, you know, just because I really hadn't eaten much yesterday and I didn't want to have a drink without having exactly having something in my stomach. But I was like, I didn't need any pretzels. Right. You know, but exactly. But it was convenient. It was easy. And it was there. But could I have easily? Sometimes I'll grab like a handful of walnuts. Right. That would have been so fine. Yeah, there was a bag of almonds next to the chip, next to the pretzels. Mm-hmm. I just am not calling my name in where the pretzels were. <laughs> you know, but right. that's the thing. But I also was like, I'm not going to sit and beat myself up because I had some pretzels. Yeah. So I think you got to be really careful with that, especially around kids too. You know, um, if kids are having weight issues or mental health issues around weight and food and things like that. Like there's your so, language. There's so many pieces to it. Yeah. The language, absolutely. Good, yeah, but absolutely. bad. I have a you know, that's bad for you. Like that's a really mm-hmm. a word I try to not use yeah. in my house. Yeah. I wanna think about that. But um, just looking at how you're what you can replace in a way that's healthy and will keep you fuller longer. And make small you make small measure changes over the course of time will add up big. For sure. Yeah. Let's talk about some more ideas because we talked about breakfast. So let's help people come up with some ideas for other meals. Adding complex carb because I think ideas and inspiration are probably the key to trying some new things. Mm-hmm. Um, what are your favorite complex carbs for lunch or dinner meals? Salads. Not as complex, but, you know, I love quinoa. Yeah. You know, what, what did, did I have last night? That? Quinoa and farro. Oh, yeah, you did. It was really good. Yeah. Um, you know what? I will just boil it, you know, up. It cooks just like rice, mm-hmm. um, so that ratio. And then add a little feta cheese mm-hmm. and red onion, tomato, and cucumber and do kind of a Greek I can remember. type. I know, I'm sorry. Um, you know, red, red, red wine vinegar and a little olive oil and do like a Greek style. Mm-hmm. Um, I've actually used it in stir fry. Oh, yeah. So a bunch good. of vegetables or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, you know, my kids certainly love sandwiches, but it is the whole grain bread. Yeah, so. yeah, whole grain bread. I mean, that's so tricky. When we're talking, when you're talking about the labels getting easier to read and interpret, that is still an area to me that I think there's a lot of confusion surrounding. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. By it, design. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> bread companies don't want to go out no. of business. Yeah. And a lot of people thinking, like, I'm going to buy multi-grain bread and it says multi-grain on the package, so it's healthy. You really don't know if it is or isn't until you check the ingredients. Right. Yeah, and that first ingredient has to say whole wheat flour, or whole oat flour. Basically, the first word has to be whole. If it's not, I don't care how many 12, 14, 18 different grains are in that bread. If the first word isn't whole, it's not whole grain. Right, right. And they have to say that by law. So, you know, that's something you should know as well. If it is a whole grain or if it's not... It has to be identified. It has to. Yeah. But some of the, I mean, we, we have, no, we, we do take some shortcuts to that as well to make life manageable. And I often will buy the butternut 100% whole wheat sandwich bread. It's soft. My kids will eat it. Right. And there's a price to it as well. Yeah. You know, the, the better the quality, the more expensive typically. So you got to, um, Watch that as well. If you're on a budget, especially right now, people are out of work. That's and, true. You know, what can you do? Um, potatoes, when we talk, I just want to go back to that. Yeah. Really inexpensive. Potatoes are very inexpensive. Very versatile. The, the key with using the potatoes, in my opinion, is to eat the skin. Oh, you have to. Yeah. A lot of people don't. And then you're right. just basically eating the, the carb portion. The skin has the fiber and all in it. You have to eat the whole potato. Right. Um, yeah, but you're right. But like whole whole grain pastas, whole wheat pastas, often there are some like the Barilla Plus that's yeah. more expensive. Right. It has bean protein and things like that. In right. It. But there are whole wheat pastas that are competitively priced to refined pastas that are just whole wheat pastas yeah. that are better. Right. Those are basic ingredients. Sometimes two ingredients. Yeah. And pasta shouldn't be more than <laughs> that anyway. But still, and I feel like they've gotten better tasting mm-hmm. as more people are demanding mm-hmm. that. So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. Cans of beans. Yeah. All oh, those are good. Yes. Complex carbs, yeah, because they also have some protein in them. Right. Tons of fiber. And you don't have to do much. Take a can of black beans, open them up, rinse them off. 
Yeah. I bet you can give that to your kids. Uh, even my toddlers will eat them. They're soft. Oh, I They're mild. Oh, my gosh. I gave them my so kids when they were meals. infants. Exactly. Yeah. So and they were fun easy. to play with. Mm -hmm. You know, good pinch your finger foods. And they're getting, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other good complex carbs. I really, I mean, I really love Ezekiel breads, sprouted breads. And again, going back to your comment that, yes, those tend to be a little bit more on the pricey side. But I really love those products, especially the sesame one. Is that what you bought me? It yeah. must be good. It was mm -hmm. good. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Brown rice, though, that's inexpensive. Right. Very inexpensive. Right. Stay. Try to stay away from the white rice if you can. Brown mm -hmm. rice, you're going to get a better quality product. And again, the whole thing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's inexpensive. And once again, easy to cook, versatile. You can do lots of things with it. You can make a big pot. Sometimes, whenever I make brown rice, because it takes a little while, I make a big pot and then got it all week to do stuff with put it in stuff right put it in my chili yeah it stays in the fridge fine and everything yeah yeah you can make stuffed peppers black too with brown rice yum yeah my kids like stuff they love stuff they one, one of my things <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah that was a whole conversation <laughs> <laughs> yeah um what else do you do any other great ideas easy ideas for complex healthy complex carbs that people should be eating i'm blanking i think because i'm hungry now but we've been talking about all this food what about yeah. you i mean we've talked about a lot of my favorites we have staple things i think we all do we have some like our go-to things and i've mentioned all of them um yeah canned beans are a staple in our house brown rice whole wheat pasta Whole wheat bread. Yeah. How do you feel about hummus? Can you process? I like hummus. Okay. It's easy to make. Super easy. Yeah. So, I, again, like, there's a brand called Oasis. Okay. That's very few ingredients. Okay. Very, very clean. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there's other brands that have long lists of ingredients. So, again, right. it comes down to looking at what are you buying. Right. But I think hummus is one where it's like, oh, I eat vegetables and hummus, you know, but it, it is, you know, one, good looking, you want to look at that portion, mm -hmm. too, because that will add very quickly. Right. Um, but make it yourself, you know, rinse the garbanzo beans. Mm -hmm. If you've got a food processor, it's the easiest way to do it in a yeah. food processor or like a ninja blender or something like that, because you want something that's going to grind it up. Some garlic, mm -hmm. garbanzo beans, zucchini, which is that sesame paste, mm -hmm. um, lemon juice olive oil, a little salt, blend it up. Sounds like maybe you have a recipe you'd like to share. I could. I'm maybe just trying maybe to that up in my head. I don't have any, you know, I'll have to look up some portions of it. But yeah, I mean, it's an easy thing to make. And then you can add, you know, roasted red peppers or some calamari olive. I mean, there's all kinds mm -hmm. of things you can add to it, but it will, you will find the taste to be so much better than what might be at the grocery store. For sure. So. All right. I'll get a recipe for you. Thanks. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're kind of out of time for today. Yes. Yeah, but this has been a fun topic, and I guess in summary, our point is that um, health carbs are not necessarily bad, but they are not all the same. We want you to enjoy them, and the ones that come in a package do so in moderation. The ones that come from the earth are um, to be enjoyed in a yes. balanced diet. And they, we know that there's a lot of research indicating the effects of health on that in terms of diabetes and weight and things like that. Right. Same thing. Same thing. I think we're good. Thing. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. I'm out of things, too. Okay. All right. It's been fun. Very good. All right. We'll catch up next time on the Feed to Succeed podcast. Okay. And if you are enjoying this, please rate and review us where you get all of your podcasts. And don't forget to follow us on all our social media spots, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and our YouTube channel. Correct. Feed to Succeed Feed YouTube, to succeed. YouTube channel. Yeah. That's a new one. Yes. <laughs> all right. All right. We will see you next time. Thank you. All right.